Okay, I'm Frank Berry. I'm the Vice President of Marketing with Memverge. And I'm Siamak Tavalai. I'm Chief Systems Architect at Google. I'm also the President of CXR Consortium. Also within the uh, OCP community, I have the uh, 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 privilege of being the Incubation Committee Lead for several projects. So, so we're here in this session to give you a little preview about uh, a lot of CX, CXL activity that's going on. I, I'm going to spend about five minutes telling you mostly about the forum that's happening on Thursday, and then maybe uh, CMAC can tell you more. I know he's plugged into a lot of the other activities that are going on. So I want to first tell you about this slide. So the, the theme of uh, our event series, our CXL forum series, is endless memory. And, and it's analogous to, to this cult classic called Endless Summer. And this is where three people travel the world following the seasons, looking for the perfect wave. And what, what's happening for the last several decades, in fact, DRAM was invented in 1969. So for over 50 years, uh, us IT community, you know, we've been chasing perfect storage for over 50 years, but the user experience for memory really hasn't changed. Brittle, volatile, expensive, non-composable. You know, we've lived with that for over 50 years. Okay, so along comes CXL. So CXL offers this promise of endless memory, petabyte cl class memory, composable, software-defined, uh, persistent memory, all the things that, that it's, it's, it's the perfect storage. And so that's the theme that we, we, we have these T-shirts made. If you come to our forum on... Uh, on Thursday, everybody gets a T-shirt that wants one, or you can stop by the, the members booth. But uh, we, we have a, we, we've been uh, doing these full-day forums. Uh, we did one on Flash Memory Summit. We did one last week on Wall Street. We're doing one on Thursday. It starts at 8 o'clock in the morning, goes all the way towards the end of the day at 4, 4 o'clock. And what you'll see there, well, well, first of all, what a lot of people are surprised at is how broad the ecosystem is for CXL. So you need processors to be compatible with CXL. You need memory chips to be compatible with CXL. You need a new class of memory controllers so you can put it on a CXL. You need software, you need switches, uh, and, and, and the systems that use all these components. So it's a very big ecosystem. And at this forum, you're gonna hear the leading memory vendors, the leading processor vendors, ARM, Intel, AMD, switch vendors, et cetera. And it'll give you a really good 360 degree view of what all these different vendors are doing, what stage they're at. Um, I think you'll walk away, you know, you're having a good idea of what's going on with CXL. Um, it'll, yeah, it'll give you a 360, a 360 degree view of, of what's happening in the ecosystem. Um, this is the agenda for Thursday. And I won't spend a lot of time on it, but you can see it goes from 8 o'clock in the morning all the way till 4 o'clock. All the leading processors, switch, uh, memory, uh, and, and other infrastructure components, software vendors are going to be there to tell you what they're doing for, for CXL. Um, and the, the last thing I want to close with is what you're going to learn there on Thursday is that we're probably a year away before you see systems into production. So we're in this year-long period now where you're going to be seeing concept cars in the wild. That, that's our fancy term for demos. Um, and so um, this particular slide is a Renault concept car. And I'm, I'm, I was hoping the GIF would be working, but it actually expands and contracts, which is our metaphor for the first demos that, that you're going to see from, from us uh, vendors, which is CXL 1.1 demos of uh, ex memory expansion. So, so now you can put um, memory on PCIe slots, which is pretty unique. Uh, and, and you can put DIMMs into memory cards. So it's just like a flexible suitcase a contraction and, uh, and, and expands like you haven't been able to do before. Um, and the other thing that you'll be able to see, this is a, a commercial for some technology that my company, Memverge, offers, is it's a software product, it's free, it's called Memory Viewer, and it allows you to see your memory. And this is important nowadays because before it was really, you didn't need to see it so much. But now, as you look into the future, and, and by the way, we, we've been shipping um, memory virtualization software for a couple of years for Intel Optane. So we're familiar with tiered memory. And what we learned was that customers needed a tool to figure out whether they need tiered memory. 
and, and, and as we move into the CXL era, we're, we, you know, we, we know that's going to be the case. You know, customers are now going to want to look at their memory, see the utilization, see if they have stranded memory, and they're going to need tools like Memory Viewer. So here's an example of one of the screens. So now for the physical topology, you can see the DIMM slots. Down below, you can see the DD, you can see that there's memory devices, the uh, CXL memory devices on the bus. Uh, you're you're going to be able to see DDR and CXL memory bandwidth. Uh, there's a process monitor in it so that you can see on a per process basis uh, what, what the utilization uh, uh, is of uh, the memory. And then lastly, you, you have a heat map. So the green line there is allocated memory, the, the red areas are usage. So th this particular screen is a great example of where, yes, I can go to a, a slower memory, maybe on the CXL bus, because I'm not utilizing this memory. So um, you can download it free, uh, memverge.com slash memory viewer, if any of you want to test drive it. The CXL version is not available. You, that's kind of a special request, but it is available. Um, and so before I turn it over to uh, CMAC, I just want to say see you guys on Thursday. It's on lower level, uh, 20 BC. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, uh, first, uh, thank you, uh, Memberg, for sponsoring the event on Thursday. Uh, that gives us a full day of great uh, uh, set of topics. Uh, and a lot of people have responded to that. We have a um, presentation. If you would go, please to go to the uh, slide with uh, all the sessions. Y you see um, uh, a number of technologies and different aspects of CXL technology is going to be described and uh, demonstrated. Uh, in the, on the show floor, I actually saw uh, some uh, memory controllers uh, are already running. Uh, one of the, um, uh, at uh, Astera Labs booth, there is a memory controller that's demonstrating memory pooling concept uh, running uh, in one of the Google chassis there, uh, working well. So all in all, <coughs> CXL has created a lot of great ac uh, excitement. Uh, we introduced CXL 3.0 specification at Flash Memory Summit. Uh, a lot of people came, it was standing room only, created a lot of excitement for a full day of CXL uh, descriptions and such. Today, for this particular session, you see that it's going to be very light on content. We're just here to celebrate life, and the uh, surf uh, theme is a very nice, uh, uh, wonderful uh, analogy here for that. Uh, if you have any questions, we can uh, uh, address some of your questions. The sessions uh, actually start tomorrow morning uh, as part of a server uh, uh, track. Uh, Ishwar Agarwal is going to present an overview of CXL 3.0 specification as part of the server track, but the CXL forum starts on Thursday. Uh, so you can imagine that CXL is providing a lot of uh, uh, features and capabilities, but we are system suppliers, system designers, uh, system architects. Uh, we should first do no harm. Uh, it is important to implement the same capabilities that people are used to first uh, run it through, find all the potential new bugs, uh, resolve those things, and the next generation, third generation, things will be more robust. Uh, a number of uh, CXL 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0 capabilities are there for suppliers to pick and choose. People don't really have to wait for CXL 3.0 devices to start building systems. Uh, somebody who wants to start building a new ASIC today can pick and choose from different capabilities they wish to. Uh, they can claim that it's a CXL 3.0 compliant because CXL specification is backward compatible. So if you build a device that was 2.0, you plug it into a system that's 3.0 capable, it will still work. So those are the, uh, some of the traits of CXL. Uh, other things uh, that CXL tried to do was build it on something that people knew about before. Uh, uh, reduce the problem to something that's been solved before, basically. People know PCIe, uh, the way that you enumerate devices, uh, discover devices, program them, set them up, and uh, build the system. Uh, it's mostly based on CXL, uh, based, based on PCIe, and maybe even backwards.
backward compatible to PCI uh, a long time ago. So, so that software guys uh, could feel comfortable that their systems still work. Of course, um, with new capabilities, opportunity exists for people to design their software to take advantage of the low latency load store capabilities that CXL provides. Uh, otherwise, for discovery and uh, enumeration, PCIe uh, works. Uh, as far as uh, first do no harm, uh, as uh, we just discussed over here, uh, there is still a lot of uh, holes and gaps that might be created because we create new capabilities and things have not found themselves into the systems yet, uh, but it needs to be uh, ring, uh, rung out <coughs> through POCs, through uh, reviews, through feedback, and your participation is very, uh, very much essential to make the ecosystem work. Some of uh, you guys might be <coughs> building systems or building tools or debug uh, uh, routines. We still need all of that. Um, every time that we create a new feature. CXL, for example, allows devices to be interconnected through a CXL uh, fabric, through switches. You can imagine um, every time that the system grows, the number of fault modes grow with it as well. If we have switches that need to connect to CPUs or connect to devices in a different chassis, and you do that through a cable, um, fault tolerance and high availability uh, techniques that we have learned in the past will be uh, necessary. Uh, not everything has been specified in the spec yet. Um, so uh, please participate, um, demonstrate your use cases of interest, make proposals on how to resolve some of these problems, uh, bring it to the consortium, have it been debated by others, receive feedback from others, make it work better. So those are basically high level how we do things at, at CXL. Any particular topics that you'd like to maybe dive into or? No, nope. any questions? <clears throat> you only have to have an OCP pass. Um, whoever has this, uh, this badge, uh, something like that can, can participate. <clears throat> so, um, we have 10 more minutes? I think we have two more minutes, right? Two more minutes, okay. So uh, I hope people are excited about possibilities, but we need to connect possibilities to realities, and that's usually a lot of pain involved. Uh, I'm glad that more than uh, one or two people are interested in CXL, so we can maybe share the pain and make things uh, work well. As, as the, this session, uh, this, this forum, you can see that su suppliers from pr processor suppliers, uh, silicon suppliers, system suppliers, software memory tiering concepts, they're all addressed here uh, as part of the capabilities that people are interested in now. Yeah, we do have 10 minutes. We do have more time. Yeah. Right. Five minutes? Okay. Five minutes. The question was if there is a system level CXL emulator or simulator. Um, I'd like to understand the question better. You mean um, viewing what devices are plugged in or actually equivalent to a bus functioning model, for example, that people need to do for ASIC development? Oh, okay. So how, how to compare performance of with or without CXL? Uh, CXL specification of CXL consortium is not developing that. But I suspect um, different companies are doing it for themselves. And if they feel comfortable, they can publish it. So other, key, other people can benefit from that as well. Is Steve Scargill here? 
So you might want to talk to Steve because one thing that our software does, it gives you transparent uh, tiering. So you don't have to build that layer. And Steve's a software architect with, with uh, Memverge. Then you can run a workload and, and do the comparison. Dick? Uh, CXL 1.1 added a compliance chapter to CXL 1.0 as a starting point. And since then, CXL um, compliance suite has grown to include all the features and capabilities all the way to 3.0. It will grow. Uh, that is not the same as validation, qualification, plug fest, and other things that, that, that happen. Uh, so the compliance suite is a contributor to all of that. Similar to PCI SIG, there will be a plug fests. Um, as a matter of fact, um, they can be co-located perhaps, uh, but that is developing the ecosystem is part of the uh, tasks that's in front of us. Part of the plan. Part of, that's a part of the plan. Yeah. Yeah, combining uh, the physical layer is based on PCI. E, so it does make sense to set a certain level, certain devices that can claim to be PCI compatible themselves to go through the PCIe uh, compliance test. They get certifications on that. Um, CXL Consortium has a certification plan. Um, contributors and uh, adopters of the technology can um, bring their components and run it through the equivalent of a plug fest and run the compliance test against it and get a, re a report which one of those items that the compliance suite uh, tests have been tested and passed. So they get a report from it. That is part of the membership of the CXL Consortium. Very good. So we're all ready for an exciting, uh, hopefully, week at OCP. Uh, CXL Forum is one full day, but there's a lot of activities as well. Membridge is in the startup section. If you guys want a t-shirt, we have them there right now. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, we'll see you Thursday. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.